We continue our devotional series in the book of Genesis, the way things were meant to be and the way things they are. God created all things good, but it's all gone sideways. We see that in the fall. We see that in other stories in Genesis. And we've been looking at the story of Noah and the flood, uh, how God um, prophesied judgment against the world, how the floods came. And now we're in Genesis chapter 8 and 9 and looking at how uh, Noah came off the ark and uh, what happens after that. And one of the first things we see uh, in Genesis chapter 8 is that there, as they come off the ark, they have a worship service. It may not look like that right off the bat, but there's a sacrifice that's made. There's a ceremony, a renewal of the covenant relationship that started in the Garden of Eden. In verse 21 of chapter 8, it talks about the Lord's reaction to that worship service. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma of the sacrifice, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. In essence, the Lord is saying to Noah, Noah, I recognize the traumatic experience that all of you have gone through. So receive these promises as reassurance uh, to you and your descendants. The bonded relationship that I started with humanity in the Garden of Eden in the very beginning, I make that relationship stand. I uphold it and I make it stand with you as the head of all humankind. Verse uh, 8 of chapter 9, then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, behold, I establish, I make my covenant stand with you and your offspring after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. God reaffirms this bonded relationship between himself and uh, humanity and the world. Uh, the covenant is a deep relationship, a bonded relationship, as I've said, between two parties, a solemn agreement. There are promises made, uh, blessings bestowed, punishments agreed to, uh, signs and seals that represent the covenant. They're instituted. So who are the parties of this covenant? God and humanity. Um, are there commands? Yes, be fruitful and multiply. Sounds familiar, just like at the beginning with Adam and Eve. Um, but it also emphasizes uh, murder. Do not commit murder. What is the promise? To never destroy the earth again with flood. And what are the signs and seals of this bonded relationship? The rainbow. Um, after a storm, sometimes we catch a glimpse of the multicolored bow in the sky. You know, in our scientific age, we look at that, we, we, we admire the beauty of it, but we... We, we think of it as simply the refraction and dispersion of the sunlight um, through the rain droplets. Uh, and we see sunlight broken up into its constituent wavelengths. Uh, the way I remembered it as a kid was Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. But I think a great way to, to think of this is that the Lord has worked into the fra fabric of nature a reminder that when the rains come, however frightening or threatening the storm may be, it is not the end. You know, there's this famous video on YouTube of a man camping out at a national park and he sees a full rainbow right across the sky. And as he comes out of his tent, he begins to hoot and holler um, uh, about it. And then he recognizes it's not simply one rainbow, but a double 
rainbow and he's on the verge of tears as he's describing it he's overwhelmed by the beauty of it and then he asks himself sort of very quietly what does this mean and as you're watching the video it's a bit over the top maybe even a little bit silly uh, but we would do well to let ourselves be overwhelmed by the beauty of creation uh, and beyond that, the imprint of God's majesty and his mercy uh, on this world. When we see a rainbow, what does it mean? It means God's promises endure, and it's worked into the very fabric of reality. I don't know what storms you've been facing or what you've come through, but the Lord is faithful. And I pray that that will be a comfort to you this week. Blessings on you all.